You're welcome to the secret place. A place of revival. May you remain blessed as you watch this video to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. If you can discern. So he fights with methods and weapons. Satan in his fight against ministers uses three major areas. Number one, evil spirits. Number two, human agents. Number three, he uses temptations. Number one, evil spirits. Already I have read it to you that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and also we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. But then when the devil uses evil spirits, what do those evil spirits do? I'll give you the references and give you the comments. You are preachers of the gospel yourself and our time is going. Evil spirits cause sickness. In Luke chapter 13 verse 11, Jesus spoke about that woman that had the spirit of infirmity bent down, bent low for 18 years. And sometimes evil spirits can cause sickness to family members or sickness even to the minister. You know, sometimes a person is a minister of the gospel and he begins to have a so terrible pain in the brain. And um, he then tells himself that what am I going to do now? As a minister, it will be a dangerous, terrible thing if I go to the psychiatric hospital because that will blow up and then I might lose my ministry. But every time he tries to read, read Christian books or read tracts or read uh, whatever it is or read the Bible, the heat will be so much in the head. And then the thought will come to him. Because of this problem, this heat in the head, I think I ought to be careful about reading. So he cuts down reading the Bible. And people will not see that Satan is fighting at all. Not only that, every time he begins to think, and he says, well, if we're really going to have this work going on, we have to ve plan very well, plan this strategy, reach that village, reach that local government area, strengthen the headquarters, and do this and that. The moment he begins to think very seriously, it affects the brain. There's so much heat in the head, and therefore he says, I must cool down. I mustn't think too much. He mustn't read too much. He mustn't think too much. Anytime he's awake, and he's awake more than 9 o'clock in the evening, he begins to feel so much terrible uh, thing in the head. And he says, I must not be awake too long. He tries to sleep at 10 o'clock. The devil knows that most of our meetings are in the evenings. It has to be because the people we want to talk to during the week, because we cannot wait for Sunday alone before we preach the gospel. They are in the offices during the day. It's in the evening we really get them. All our crusades and everything. Now the devil is bringing a problem in the head. I mustn't treat too much. I mustn't think too much. I mustn't keep awake too much. That's him using his method and weapon against that minister. And he can do it against the family. He can do it against members of the church. You know what? When... You announce on Sunday, last Sunday, we lost so-and-so, so-and-so died. Then, two weeks after that, another person died. You announce again because you have to announce to get the funeral service uh, done. So-and-so died. One month after that, you announce again, so-and-so died. The people in the church will be saying, ah, three people in two months. If you make the next announcement, you lose a, a percentage of that church. The devil is doing it. He knows what he's doing. The people on the street may not see the devil in that. All they see in that is that, well, there is a problem. He uses evil spirits to cause sicknesses. Number two, to cause vexation and torment. Matthew chapter 15 verse 22. Number three, he uses confusion and conflict, strife and division. Judges chapter 9, verses 20, 
2 to, to 24. Evil spirit causing confusion, causing disagreement. And you know, sometimes in churches, we have uh, divisions, we have strife. And many times, we're looking at flesh and blood. We're fighting flesh and blood. And we're saying that uh, so-and-so's family is always a problem to this church. Yes, but there's something behind that personality, that individual. Every time confusion is coming up, conflict is coming up, strife and divisions are coming up, we, we need to begin to see that sometimes it's evil spirits. That is causing all those things. If you read those references, I've dictated later, you'll see that that is, that is the work of evil spirits. Sometimes utterances and prophecies that scatter the flock. We come to the church and um, somebody said he's got a revelation, he's got a prophecy. And without sharing it with the pastor, he comes to the church and he says, Thus says the Lord. The Lord said there is somebody in this church that is not allowing the church to make progress. Somebody is committing adultery with somebody's wife in this church. And before you go there to tap him on the shoulder and say, that's enough, that's enough, we'll pray for that person. He says, Mr. So-and-so, if you don't repent, God will judge you because you are having immoral dealings with Mrs. So-and-so. That church will scatter. And the man says, it's not my fault, it's what God put in my mouth that I said. That, com that thing, utterance, or so-called prophecy that will scatter the whole flock, that's of the devil. Even if anything was going on, how will God handle it? Will God handle it to destroy his own work? To destroy the flock of God? Therefore, you can see the method that the way it is done to destroy the work of the Lord, it is the devil behind it using his agent, using the evil spirits. In 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 12, verse 14, and verses 17 to 23, Micaiah said, I see the sheep, the children of Israel, they scattered without any shepherd. And he said, a lying spirit was in the mouth of the false prophets. And he was saying, go up to Ramos Gilead and you will win the battle. But he said, the consequence of that prophecy is that they are going to scatter the children of Israel and the leader and the king will die. And Ahab said, lock up this man and let him be given the bread of adversity before I come back. Micaiah said, if you come back from that battle, the Lord has not sent me. You see, the evil spirits can be lying spirits in the mouths of the people that say they are prophesying and their prophecy is scattering the flock, destroying the flock. Prophecy should build up. Prophecy should edify. Prophecy should encourage the people of God not to destroy. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when we drop new video. God bless you.